According to a recent survey we conducted, 73% of people agree that we need to do something about the environmental challenges facing the planet. And not just something, that 73% agreed that, quote, if things continue on their present course, we'll soon experience a major catastrophe, end quote. 73%. That means there is enormous appetite for making the planet more sustainable and enormous potential in the marketplace for driving sustainability choices. So why is the market share for green products less than 10% worldwide? What are we missing? What is the marketplace missing? And how do we get that market share from less than 10% to 73%? Well, uh, not this way. We're not going to look like this person here. He wears Birkenstocks with socks. Uh, he drinks soy milk, he bikes to work, he has solar roofs. Most of us are not going to become like him. That's because dark green consumers, like the brown consumers driving their Hummers, are too tiny minority in the economy. Most of us are right there, right there in the middle. Let's call us convenient environmentalists. We want to do the right thing, but only when it's convenient for us. We are convenient environmentalists because we have a lot of excuses for not uh, buying green products. As you can see here at the bottom, only 10% admit that environmental issues are not a priority for me. There are other excuses, I don't trust the environmental claim of the product, it's not easy to find the product, I'm not sufficiently informed, and at the top, 67% say the products are too expensive or of a lower quality. If we can remove this excuse, I think we are on the way to winning the battle. So, but why do people think that green products are of a lower quality? Well, let's take Nike. Everybody associates Nike with cool. But when Nike decides to make a green shoe, it looks like this. <laughs> Made of brown hemp and sold as better for the environment. Critics call it Air Hobbits. It just doesn't look like a Nike shoe. The other problem, the Hobbit shoe doesn't perform either like a Nike shoe. It sold for $110 a pair but was poorly made. As a result, the Hobbit shoe was off the shelves within a year. What's the lesson here? Greenness alone doesn't sell green products. And research tells us that if we perceive any trade-off between the quality of a product and its benefit to the environment, we're less likely to buy it. Here is another green marketplace failure, Dakota electric car. It was released in March 2012. Have you ever seen one? Okay, probably not, because only 100 cars were sold before Coda had to file for bankruptcy. So what doomed the Coda? Couple of things. Number one, like the Hobbit shoe, the Coda had some performance issues. Its battery had a limited range of 88 miles. Number two, it looks like a Kia Rio. <laughs> Can you tell the difference? <laughs> So the Kia Rio sold for $15,000. So you're paying a huge premium simply for greenness. Number three, and this is important too, you don't get the status of driving a clearly green car like the Prius. That spells market disaster. So what is it going to take to overcome these excuses? Research tells us that consumers buy green products when they benefit not just the environment, but the consumer. There are four personal benefits to this equation. Performance, status, health, and money. I call these the green bundle. Green products that also feature some of these benefits for the consumer do much better in the marketplace and thus have a chance to drive real sustainable change. 
for a first performance or quality. Look at the Tesla electric car. Tesla buyers don't buy them because they have lower environmental footprint. They almost never mention the environment in surveys. Instead, they buy them because of their superior performance, specifically aesthetics and acceleration. You can see here a quote from Ivan is, uh, uh, about, about a Tesla, and he says, the Tesla um, S-Class is more efficient than a Prius, quicker than a Porsche 911, and has more cargo space than many SUVs. Tesla has also become a status symbol. Actually, status is the second benefit in the green bundle, and it's quite powerful. Let me tell you about an experiment that proved it. This is an experiment we conducted in one of the UCLA residence halls. We provided real-time information to students about the electricity usage at the appliance level. The idea is that knowing which appliances appliance consume the most and when can help you reduce your consumption. Look at all the information we provided to them. Energy use by source, social and historical comparison, real-time energy use, what was the response to this high frequency data? No response, no change in behavior. We were disappointed. So we decided to make this information public. We posted weekly reports about each room's electricity usage. These reports were very visible. They were next to the elevators. Everyone could see them and know that everyone else uh, would, could see their behavior too. So we had green dots if you consumed electricity below average, and red dots if you were consuming electricity above average. Red is bad, green is good. The results, an average reduction in electricity usage by 20%. As soon as we made the information public, students responded. They didn't want to be perceived as high users. This is status as work at work. Third in the green bundle, health. Research shows that the most important reason we want to buy green is for our health and the health of our families. It's the main reason we purchase organic products. That's why the organic food market grew 200% over a decade, while the overall food market grew only 30%. Health is so powerful that when you put money up against health, health wins. We conducted another field experiment where we provided real-time information to 120 homes. They got information about the electricity usage at the appliance level, electricity about their fridge consumption, heating and cooling, lights, dishwasher, and so on. In addition, in ex this experiment, we provided uh, information about so two different groups, information about the impact of consumption on health. That's the first one, the first group. The message was last week you used X percent more than your most efficient user. This is how much you pay over a year. And the second message was about the health impact of consumer electricity. We told them this is how much electricity you, you consumed last week. And this corresponds to X pounds of air pollutants which have been caused uh, which have been known to cause health impacts such as childhood asthma and cancer. Which message worked better? The health message. Uh, it reduced the consumption by 8%. The money message? No change in behavior. People actually realized how inexpensive electricity was to them. <laughs> For the average users, if they were like to behave like the most efficient, they would save $5 a month. You know, something, just, it's just the cost of a coffee. We did the same experiment in India and we found the same results. Money is the final benefit in the green bundle. I just told you that when savings are, you know, small, people don't really pay attention to them. So when does money matter? I'll say, when money is framed as a tax or a loss. Think about your grocery bags. Many cities have banned plastic bags and taxed new one for 10 cents. Before that, in some stores, and Whole Foods is an example, you would receive a 10 cent credit if you were to bring your own bag. Did you? I didn't, sorry. <laughs> 
but now that I have to pay 10 cents for a paper bag, I do. And honestly, 10 cents should not matter to me, especially when I shop at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> but research has shown that I'm not alone. This tax has clearly changed the behavior of many people. So savings can motivate people, provided they are big enough, or provided money is framed as a loss or a tax. In conclusion, I'd say, if we want to drive sustainable behavior through the marketplace, we need to get realistic of what drives human behavior. The green bundle is the key. We can't expect consumers to be virtuous on their own. When the marketplace gives us products that are green and have one of these benefits, performance, status, health, or money, then we'll see the green revolution. Thank you. <laughs>